Now this is a video I've wanted to film for a while, mainly because over the years, as we all know, music and the way your music gets heard has changed a lot. This is rapidly changing from month to month. And one big aspect is social media. And I feel like artists approach it usually in two different ways. Some artists go ham and go aggressively all in on social media. The other artists go with the approach of, well, I don't really need to use it. Maybe I'll tweet once in a while. Maybe I'll use Instagram or TikTok or YouTube once in a while. If my music is good enough, then it will be heard. And I wanted to do this video to basically be super direct and get right to the uh, to the punch, so to speak, that you have to do social media. And I know you're going to hear, you know, a lot of quotes like the cream rises to the top or something like that. Basically, the idea that if you make really good music, people will eventually hear it. And I got to be honest that not really, especially as we approach 2023, the biggest thing I'm seeing now is how imperative social media is getting, especially when it comes to the fact of using music now with video. You know, TikTok is the prime example of this. They're, they were really the first app to pioneer this where people would go out of their way, not only to make videos and use music, but to pair them together in a very seamless way. This is a very new thing. And I have touched upon this in other videos talking about why social media is so important, why you need to market your music. It's very important. But I think especially in this day and age, it's just so imperative when it comes to specifically using social media for the tool that it is. For example, for me, and this is still kind of mind blowing to see, I use a platform called SongStats. I will do a video about it a little bit in the future, but based off of them, at least the exact time of this video, my music has gotten, which is kind of crazy, half a billion views on all platforms combined. In terms of those views, what I'm talking about is let's say if someone uses one of, their, one of my songs in their own video on TikTok and it gets X amount of views, the combination of all the views on TikTok from all the videos using my music and on Instagram and Spotify streams and pretty much all these platforms, half a billion views is pretty ridiculous. And I know that pretty much all of that is not really a result from my songs being good. I mean, not to bash myself. I think I do make good music, don't get me wrong, but it's the fact that I have kind of focused a lot on marketing. How do I get my songs out there? I've mentioned before, one of my biggest marketing tools is to title my songs in such a way that I feel like when people go to post a video on TikTok, they search it, right? My two most popular songs right now on TikTok is one, Lionel Messi, about the famous football player, and two is St. Patrick's Day. Pretty self-explanatory that the St. Patrick's Day song, you know, when people go to do a St. Patrick's Day video, what do they do? St. Patrick's Day, my song pops up, and I'm the number one result for that on TikTok. Now, if I call that song, and I've used this analogy before in other videos, or you know, example, if I call that song top of the morning or some kind of Irish saying or slang or whatever, would it have gotten as much attention? No, it's just because I looked at it not only through a marketing perspective, but through a social media perspective of, okay, if I want people to potentially use my song in their videos, and if you think about it, when someone goes on TikTok, Alexa uses my song, the St. Patrick's Day song, to create an insane St. Patrick's Day video. The biggest thing or the trend that my song kind of started is people doing makeup, which was unbelievable. So the song would build, they'd be like normal face, so to speak. And then on the drop, they'd be like put their head up or do something. And they'd have all this crazy makeup and kind of Irish and St. Patrick's Day style like vibe and art and all this kind of stuff. It was, it was really cool to see the way people use my song in that way, right? And so if you think about it, the fact that my song was able to kind of capitalize on that market from being called that is huge. And that's what I have to say to a lot of people. I've gotten pretty much 90% of my attention from social media. And it's tricky because we all, you know, we all know as musicians, you spend, I mean, what, hours, months, weeks, years, you know, my, for example, my uh, Las Vegas album, which was my sixth full length album, took three years. My newest album, they said the time this video, No Solution, which was 50 tracks, took three to four years of all the non-EDM songs I produced over the past three or four years. That's a lot of time and, you know, craft and energy and all the kind of creative elements I had to kind of bring out of myself to make a lot of music. And it's kind of annoying and interesting to think like, okay, I'm trying to make all this music because I want to make a very good, unique song. 
and then hopefully some 16 year old uses it in their TikTok video, right? Two very different things. And that's where I know a lot of musicians are like, I'm not gonna make a song for TikTok. I'm not gonna try to appeal to social media. And it is a very unfortunate truth that, well, yes, I do agree with that to an extent that, yeah, you know, try to make songs just for TikTok or Instagram. Yeah, maybe not the best, even in the titling or whatever. But at the end of the day, this is kind of the world we're living in now. I remember I was talking to somebody who was very uh, high up in Insomniac. In case you don't know, Insomniac is the biggest electronic festival company that throws tons of events. They're the ones that run EDC among tons of other festivals. And she even said, look, I hate to say it, but right now, if I were to coach an artist in terms of if I was their manager or their agent or whatever, I would tell them spend 90% on marketing, creating really good promos, Instagram, TikTok, all the social media accounts, and do 10% on production. And I know to a lot of hardcore musicians, that's a very kind of tough pill to swallow. Cause you're like, no, I didn't get into this to post selfies on Instagram. I'm getting into this to make music for 12 year olds to use on TikTok to dance to. But that is kind of the marketing way that a lot of artists now have to use to get your music out there. I mean, pun intended, there's a lot of saturation right now in the music industry, especially because anybody, I think this is both a good and a bad thing. Anybody like a 10 year old can get a laptop. I even was at Best Buy. I saw laptops for $200. It's so crazy to think that like 200 bucks is, I mean, not, I'm not saying it's nothing, but I mean, to have an entire laptop computer, that's ridiculous. So a 10 year old can, you know, spend 200 bucks for a computer, get some music production software, start making music, and then put it on SoundCloud for free, you know, because they have the, like a free account or spend $20 a year for unlimited uploads on DistroKid, for example, or even TuneCore now as part of their new pricing model has actually a free version where you can release your music for free and it only goes on social media accounts. And if you want to pay more, you can upload more and blah, 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 blah. So if you think about it, the barrier to entry for almost anybody right now to, to not only create music, but get your music out there and distributed and get it heard is so low, which is amazing. But on the other end, and now you're talking about having to shift through so many songs and records and albums and singles and EPs and everything, that if you make a banger of a record, but it doesn't get in the right hands, it could easily flop. And again, I know this sucks to say, because I can't tell we've all been there and I've been there too, where I'm like, I'm on SoundCloud. I find somebody with, you know, 500 followers. And then I listen to one of their songs. I'm like, holy crap, this is a banger. Or like say I'm on Spotify or another like platform and I hear a song and I'm like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And then on the flip side, kind of sinks to say, but I guarantee you, all, we've all been there as well. Well, let's say I go on TikTok or on another platform and I see a song has gotten or been used, for example, like saying 30 or 40 million videos. And I listen to the song and I'm like, all right, it's not a bad song, but what I consider a well produced song, not really. What I consider uh, like a really creative, unique song that stands out, not really. It's just that the artist was smart with their marketing. And because their song got noticed, because it got heard, because it got used, because it got shared, now that artist is now getting attention. Now people want to see them live. And then one thing leads to another. And now they're touring. When another musician makes way better music, didn't focus on marketing, and they're not touring. And that's a very unfortunate thing. Remember, whether we like it or not, if you are a musician, you know, Joe, you know DJ Joe Schmo, whether it's electronic or like say hip hop artist or whatever, if you're Joe Schmo, you are a business in a sense. And remember that most artists, especially now, don't make that much money from streams or downloads. I mean, pretty much nothing at all. We all know that. Spotify pays, what is it? I think it's like, uh, it's 0 0.004 cents. I put that in quotation marks per stream. So you're looking at what, like four tenths of a penny you get per stream. It's ridiculous. And so that's why a lot of artists make their money from like touring and merch and stuff like that. But the biggest thing is touring. And in order to tour, you need people to know who you are. Of course, sounds kind of simple to say, but breaking the sound almost from like a backwards engineering perspective to tour, you need to get, you need people to know who you are. And in addition, not only know who you are, but care enough about you and get excited enough about you to spend their hard earned money that they worked for, whether it's 10, 20, $30, $40, $50, however much that concert ticket is, and then buy the ticket. And then of course have the, you know, energy, you know, especially because a lot of people work super hard now to then go out of their house, Uber and Lyft there, buy drinks, etc. basically to spend their hard earned money to see you perform out live. But the only way they're going to find out about you and about who you are 
is from that marketing perspective. Yes, I think that having a good record and having good songs, of course, will kind of gear people up to want to see you. But at the end of the day too, they can only learn about how good of a musician you are if you market it well. And again, especially in this day and age, as we're approaching 2023, you know, and th for the years to come, the number one way now is social media. The good thing is it is free, right? Like to have your songs on TikTok for the most part, you know, and to have it on all the other, all the other platforms. Yeah, you do have to use a distributor like DistroKid, for example, spend that $20 a year. That's almost nothing to get your music out there and get it heard. And of course, once you start making money, you're gonna make way more money than just $20 a year. But in order to create, let's say a TikTok account, start making videos with your music, to create an Instagram account, to create a YouTube channel, YouTube shorts are gonna blow up next year. There's already talk that YouTube shorts are actually gonna overtake TikTok. Whole other subject for a whole other video. And I will be posting a lot more videos about like how to grow on YouTube and social media marketing because I think it's very important, not just for someone trying to get to social media to, be, to become a YouTuber, but also for musicians. There's a lot to this, and I know it's kind of tricky. I know it's kind of like a very random video where we're kind of talking in circles, doing more of like a fireside chat type video. I kind of just want to talk off the top of my head just to kind of say at the end of the day, you need to focus on social media. I've said it before in much of other videos. I've done videos like this where marketing is super important. It's something that you don't want to overlook, and I feel like a lot of artists do. And the whole idea that if you make good music, eventually it will be heard is not the case anymore. I hate to say it, whether you like it or not, social media is here to stay. Social media is also not only here, here to stay, but here to grow. And the number one way to get your music out there and get it heard is focus on social media marketing.